Hello, hello everyone. This is Man United inside again on it. Welcome back again. Except Michael Oliver seemed, in an ill-tempered final act at Anfield, to interpret the instruction a little too literally. No sooner did Diogo Dallo protest the failure to award Manchester United a late throw-in, when the ball had clearly come off Mohamed Salah, than the referee sped over to show him a yellow card for dissent. Five seconds later, he brandished a second. And in that moment, you wondered if Webb's crusade was truly best served by such a gratuitous power trip. Oliver has form for this blink and you will miss it two card trick. He also performed it last year, to the detriment of Gabriel Martinelli, booking the Arsenal winger for a shove at Wolves and then, within a couple of heartbeats, sending him off for a crude foul. On that occasion, you could argue it was a suitable sanction for the rarity of a rapid double offence. But this time, Dallow had every right to look dumbfounded. The United fullback reacted mildly to the initial mistake, certainly by comparison to Erling. Holland's bug-eyed antics against Simon Hooper and found himself sent off for his trouble. For anyone hoping for consistency, it was not an edifying sight. You did not even have to invoke the Holland example to see that Oliver had overreached. You only had to judge his own earlier actions in the same game. In the first half, Darwin Nunez reacted to being cautioned for a body check on Johnny Evans by petulantly kicking the ball away and then sarcastically applauding. This was quintessential dissent, on a par with the imaginary yellows for which Webb has urged the harshest response, and yet Oliver let it slide. By what metric does an innocuous tantrum invite two bookings, while a brazen piece of provocation merits nothing? It is a paradox that needs clarifying if fans' faltering faith in referees is to be restored. Defending the dignity of their profession is a noble enterprise. And there is no doubt the game has been disfigured for too long by too many instances of wanton abuse. Dallow's fit of pique, though, did not belong in that category. It was a reasonable reaction to an erroneous call, which gave Liverpool a dangerous attacking platform with only a minute left. And unlike Holland, who had turned on Hooper for refusing to play advantage by screaming in his face, Dallow did not even appear to be directing his eye at Oliver in particular. If this is now the standard for a red, it is tempting to ask whether future gains of this magnitude will end with any players left on the pitch. One of the many problems with Dallow's dismissal is that there is no obvious sign of two separate transgressions having occurred. Granted, his initial flounce, throwing his arm out in contempt, was aggressive and worthy of a yellow. But where was the escalation? Gary Neville was none too sure, reflecting, it all feels like it's the same thing to me. I think Michael Oliver has maybe created something that he didn't really need to. Oliver's peers could be forgiven for concluding. The same. This is a point in time when many referees believe they are not receiving adequate protection. They worry when they see Holland escape any Football Association action for tweeting, WTF, what the F, over Hooper's decision, and they are nervous at what more might await them when Mikel Arteta is cleared of a misconduct charge after describing VAR as embarrassing and a disgrace. In this climate, what they can do without is one man's overzealousness, giving legitimate grounds for grievance. One snap response by many United fans was to accuse Oliver of trying to make himself the story. But what referees would seriously consider inserting themselves into the narrative any further than necessary? Their job is already one of nightmarish sensitivity, with the slightest misjudgment inviting a cascade of abuse. The most logical interpretation of Oliver's severity towards Dallow is not that he was caught in publicity, but simply that he was seeking to implement Webb's crackdown. What Eric Ten Hag told Manchester United players in the dressing room after Liverpool draw, Man United earned a point with a gutsy performance against Liverpool at Anfield, where they are now winless in nine. Eric Ten Hag told the Manchester United players he was proud of their performance in the 0-0 stalemate with Liverpool. United halted their losing run with a creditable point at Anfield, where Liverpool failed to win for the first time this season. Liverpool had triumphed in their previous two home games against United 4-0 and 7-0 and were tipped to win handsomely again, but United became only the second team this calendar year to prevent Jurgen Klopp's side from scoring at home. I said that after the game in the dressing room, I'm very proud of this team, Ten Hag said. We should do this more often. I said this. For instance, Newcastle was also a tough game, we make one mistake, we switch off and concede the goal. 
But when you stay in the game, when you are disciplined in your game plan, finally it opens up and you can take your chances or get two, three, four passes in after the ball regains, get the switches in and then you can really be more dominant in the game. We mentioned the 7-0, but I said to them last year, we played them three times, we lost one time, but we beat them two times. We are capable of beating Liverpool and we proved today we are capable of if we bring this every game on the pitch. First of all, we are a hard team to beat but from that point, we can go and win games and also big games. Ten Hag also lauded Kobe Mainin's ability to hurt opponents after what was only the 18-year-old's third Premier League start. Mainu slotted into midfield alongside Sofian Amrabat and sparked two of United's more auspicious attacks. Mainu made his full Premier League debut only three weeks ago against Everton at Goodison Park and was the man of the match. The FA Youth Cup winner acquitted himself as impressively on the other side of Stanley. Park. When you are good enough, you are old enough and he proved that, Ten Hag stressed. When he gets used more often in those games, he will get even more joy from it. With his skill, with his speed of action he can get such passes, three or four passes in and get switches in and then he's the player who can really hurt opponents. Eric Ten Hag fires forward response to Virgil van Dijk claim after Liverpool's draw against Man United, Liverpool were held to a frustrating 0-0 draw against Man United. Eric Ten Hag was satisfied with Manchester United's performance as they earned a goalless draw against Liverpool. The Red Devils went into the encounter against the backdrop of losing 3-0 to Bournemouth at Old Trafford and crashing out of the Champions League at the group stage. What's more, they had suffered a chastening 7-0 defeat at Anfield last season while Liverpool had won every game on their own patch this term. Despite Jurgen Klopp's side having 34 shots, United limited the hosts to a dearth of click-up chances. And Ten Hag, under pressure from sections of supporters, was delighted with his troops. The Red Devils head coach told the BBC, How pleased was I with the performance? In a lot of respects, yeah, absolutely. The performances were very good from the side. I think, on, the game plan, the players were brilliant in how they were together and they stuck together, how they were fighting. Maybe the only criticism would be in possession, we could have hurt them more. We get one, two, three passes and we are in. But that was the only thing. We could have scored one of the two big opportunities and even won the game, but I think we defended very well. You have seen Liverpool and it is an obviously very good team, and a very good attacking team. They have a lot of good movements and you have to defend very disciplined. Big compliment to the team, because, we did that. The spirit, the passion, the desire, we had, it, and also, we were, smart. Liverpool defender Virgil van Dijk claimed that there was only one team trying to win the game and that United were buzzing with grinding out a point.